If there ever was a time Well, I need the Lord Shoulder me him now Shoulder me him now If there ever was a time I don't know where that song came from It's an oldie Let me just shut off these uh, notifications real quick they make making too much noise. There you go. Ah, who joined in? Safahan? You came on my scope before, I believe. I'm trying to remember which one. Good evening. Oh, I know who this is. <laughs> I keep saying, I keep thinking it's a guy. Forgive me. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. How's your book coming along? How are things coming along, Janice? That's Janice, right? Please tell me I'm right. <laughs> See, I need to scope a little more often. I can be familiar with everybody's handle. Hi, it's... Yeah, I got it right. <laughs> I got it right. I'm glad you came on here. So, because you are writing a book, you'll be a good candidate so I was thinking early about, because I had a conversation with somebody who was trying to find out what is their message in life. They have something they really want to um, present to the world. They want to help other people, but really not knowing what it is, what is the theme, excuse me, that theme that stays with them that other people can probably see and they can't see. Hope you can see and hear me good. Let me take out the charge. I'm actually charging the phone. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, finding out what their message is. So I thought about five different ways you can kind of find out what it is that you have to say, what your message is, what your voice is. And one of the things I thought about was sometimes we have to go back into our childhood and even looking at the activities that we like to play in. And I thought about myself. I thought about how um, the type of games I like to play, why I always wanted to play investigative things or things that were thought provoking. Um, like to find out about the how and the when and the why and the who and, and because and all of that stuff. And it helped me found, I'm going to get to that in a minute about my message. Thank you for the hearts about my message to the world. And of course you see by now is to do, it deals with inspira inspiration and empowerment and all that good stuff and to be one who loves to inspire and motivate others you also have a part of you that likes to find out why and how right because that's how you come up with what can you do to help others uh, find out who they are in their own self-discovery so but anyway so I thought about that and why I like to play such type of games like okay so I'm always the type of person who like to find out why this happened and who and who affected you and and all of that great stuff so the second thing I thought of was sometimes you have to think about the nature of your relationships you know what role do you always find yourself in in your peer in your peer group are you that leader are you that individual who always try to find peace or solve a problem maybe you're one who always trying to uh, bring solutions to a problem to a group you're that individual you know, that maybe that's your message. You're wanting, you know, because it kind of helps you find out what it is you like to do. Even with you writing your book or something, um, what message, especially if it's one that's dealing with your own life, personal things in, your, in the book, or um, if you want to do coaching or counseling, or, or even in your ministry, it's something that you have behind the scenes, behind the scenes mostly. Oh, that's the role that you play behind the scenes. But you're probably that person who see a lot and you, you get wisdom, but maybe you're quiet about it. You don't vocalize it that much, but it doesn't mean, because sometimes people who are behind the scenes and quiet, people mistake them for being someone who doesn't know something. Or, and, and a lot of times that's the person who have the most wisdom. They just not always as vocal with it, but they see stuff, they, and they, but they don't say anything. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's some of us. So, um, so that's your role. You're behind the scenes sometimes. And you, but, you know, you're about to come in front. You know that, right? You're about to step out in front, so be ready because you can't stay in that, that role for too long. <laughs> I'm a purpose pusher. 
So that's another area. Look at what role you play, you know, and, and so and so that leads me to my next one is because I, I wrote I wrote these down, <laughs> you know, right? I had to write these down so I won't forget because I'm kind of I am kind of tired. Um, what is always resounding out of your spirit? What is always coming out of your heart? That's a question you need to ask yourself. What do you always put out in the atmosphere all the time? Like I said, there's a theme that follow us whether we know it or not. And it always follow us in our paths and our relationships. There's a song. <laughs> there's something that's with us. We carry with us. We have a present about it. When we come in, into a room or we come into a group, we bring this theme with us. And so finding out what that is can lead you to finding out what your message is, what your purpose is, right? Which leads me to my next one. And sometimes we don't think about this one. What do people persecute you about? What do people find negative, something negative that they have to say about that particular attribute that you have? Because a lot of times that attribute that you have that someone ridicules you about is your gift, is your anointing, is your, your grace area. That's your message. And I, t I did talk about earlier when I tried to do the scope and I had a bad connection. Um, I remember a particular individual persecuting me on the fact that I always find the positive in things. So why do you always find the good in, good in people or the good in things? And she said it was such a negative connotation. It took me back a little bit. You know, but... In retrospect, I thought about it, and God showed me that that's your gift. That's what you do. That's your strength. You find the positive. You help people come out of that stuck place, that pit, and, and that place of, of, of unworthiness and, and low self-esteem because you help them change their perspective. You help them see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's a good thing. That's not bad. And so when he showed me that, whoo, revelation came and I felt liberated. I said, thank you, God. Because people I have, you feel bad about something that's actually good. That's a good value and virtue that you have. And so I didn't have to walk in self-condemnation or feel like something was wrong with me because I felt that way and realized, you know what? That's something positive I have, that I see the glass half full instead of the glass half empty. And I'm no longer going to apologize for that, being too strong as a woman. That's something you'd be per you're persecuted for. Thanks for joining in again. <laughs> Somebody who joined in earlier. So being a strong woman, and everybody has a different definition of what strong is, but not apologizing for being strong. And break that down for me. Being strong in what area? Somebody who's not weak or um, someone who speak up for themselves, who's assertive. That's being a strong woman, being confident, knowing who you are. And not apologizing for that. No, I'm not. I'm, I, I consider myself a strong woman in those attributes where I've learned over the years. Because when I was a young child, I didn't. Assertive, yes. I wasn't assertive when I was real young. I didn't speak up for myself all the time. I was, in, I was inconsistent with that. So I did experience fear. And I see that you like, I just did an audio on being sick and tired of being afraid and fearful. You know, I got sick and tired of doing that. I got sick and tired of letting people take advantage or get their thoughts out or defend themselves when I would internalize things that I would hold it in and then I would go home and then I ponder over it for hours till it made me sick in my stomach because I didn't stand up for myself. Me too had to be when I became single, right? That's a now you're single, so you say you don't you didn't have the person beside you didn't have that support are you saying after you became single is when you learned to be assertive because now it was just you by yourself and you had to change the way maybe the way you did things the way you spoke it there's nobody else to speak on your behalf or for you um i got sick and tired of <laughs> not and i had things to say and you know what would really get me upset i had an issue of not being able to articulate at that very moment and sometimes I, because you know, sometimes we still battle with old stuff, but we just know how to overcome it and not let it cripple us again. I had a problem of coming, of articulating how I felt at the time. I think because at the moment, if I'm being insulted, I'm stuck in 
being insulted where I'm not able to think or have a comeback. I have a comeback later where I start thinking about why did not I say this? I, then it comes to me what I should have said, what I could have said, but at that moment, maybe I was just stuck and frozen because of, at the fact that you just insulted me and my feelings are hurt. And I think, and, and it'll kill me later on. I'm like, oh my God, why can't I say that when this is happening? <laughs> Now I have wisdom. You don't always have to say stuff when something is happening. And there's sometimes you do need to be assertive. So now I'm like opposite. Now I'm like the advocate, not only for myself, but for other people. I don't like to see people being taken advantage of because I know what that feels like as well. So anyway, that's another way of finding out um, what your message is, what your purpose is. Um, right? <laughs> um, that what, is we, what are you persecuted for? Things that you're persecuted for. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be a good thing. That could be something uh, that you're good at, something that you do that's positive. Maybe somebody else just have a problem with it because maybe they have their own issues. And the fifth thing I wanted to um, talk about is listening to yourself. Listen to what comes out of your spirit. I always hear myself talking about inspiring and empowerment and all this stuff and try to push people into their destiny and their purpose. And I'm always finding out things when people are talking. I'm like, wow, you're good at that. You know, even helping them see the revelation. And it's not something always deep. It could be something that you do all the time, but you're just not really identifying it. It's my muscle. It's my muscle for where I am going. Yes. <laughs> Listening to yourself, finding out what is that thing? What are you always talking about all the time? That is your message. And a lot of people stuck. And this may be nothing to somebody else, but a whole I talk to a whole lot of adults, especially women, and they do feel like, I don't know what it is. I want to do something. I want to say something. But I don't know how to pinpoint exactly what that particular thing is. So sometimes, again, looking back in retrospect and going back from your childhood all the way up, you can kind of find something that's been following you. There's a pattern. There's a language that you have that you always carry with you and it always come out to people. But take next time, listen to what you say all the time. Listen to something that you always repeat. Helping other Christians reach their purpose. That's your message, right? Helping other Christians reach their purpose. So you you have you're like a you saying you're similar like me. You help push people into their purpose. You help navigate them. You're like a, a um, GPS, <laughs> if you will. To kind of help them find their purpose, whatever it is that they're called to do. Even though that's God's business, he uses us to help people, right? He, he used people to help us. He had put people in my life to help me. Sometimes they was just a reflection of something that God put inside me. And I'm like, wow, okay, God, I see why you aligned me with this individual. I remember I did a message a long time ago. I talked about watch who you align yourself with. And I came out of the king of Judah and the king of Israel. It was King Ahab and, Je and Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was obedient unto God. King Ahab was kind of going towards the left. And what happened was, oh, praise God. I thank God for you too. I remember something awesome about that story because King Ahab, I hope I'm not saying the wrong King Lord. Forgive me if I'm messing this up. I don't want to sound like Tyler Perry when he plays Medea and try to give somebody the Bible and, and <laughs> he get things all mixed up. But um, King Ahab tried to set up King Jehoshaphat because uh, he was going out to battle and he wanted to know if he was going to win the battle. So he would consult prophets, but he would consult false prophets Instead of consulting, now I'm just going to kind of remember all this on the top of my head. There was a prophet named King Micaiah, um, I believe you pronounce it Micaiah. And so, but what, why King Ahab did not like King, I mean, Prophet Micaiah, because Micaiah would always prophesy the truth. He would speak from what thus say of the Lord. He didn't want to hear from him. He wanted to hear from the false prophets who, who would tell him what he wanted to hear. His itching ear wanted to hear from him. And so he would say things like, I don't want to go to him. When Jehoshaphat would direct them to him, he's, I don't want to hear from him because he, oh, he never had nothing good to say. And what he meant by that was he always spoke the truth and he didn't want to he didn't speak what he wanted him to speak. So basically you wanted him to tell you a lie. 
You that's what he wanted. He didn't want to hear the truth. So what he did was when there was a battle that was going forth, he wanted to find out what position he should take. Now, when he did finally go to the prophet, the prophet told him that if he would go out to fight, that he was going to lose that fight. That's why you got to be careful with who you align yourself to with because it can be the wrong individuals. I forgot why I end up here, but I think I talked about watching people, all oh, that who are around you because they can be a reflection of who God has called you to be. And so this was a negative. This was a negative. This is a negative of side of um, being aligned with the wrong individual. They can lead you to the wrong path. So when he told them that he would lose the battle, he didn't listen to the prophet. He listened to the false prophets who told him to go ahead on and fight. So that's what he, but let me tell you what he did. That was so trifling. He had King Jehoshaphat put on his um, outfit to look like him because in his mind, he said when Jehoshaphat goes out to battle, his enemy is going to think that it's him and they're going to shoot an arrow and it's going to kill Jehoshaphat and then he'll be saved. But God is so good. See, if God be for you, who can be against you? This scope is about to go into a whole other direction. I'm going to end it though real soon. What happened though, when Jehoshaphat did go out to battle, to battle against Ahab's enemy, the enemy still shot the arrow and it went to King um, Ahab anyway, and it killed him. He came back on a horse dead. So you have to be so just like the enemy. That's right. It was an enemy telling you. God, he thought that he, he tried to set up somebody. So what I'm saying is be careful because you got people who mean you no good at all and they will try to set you up. So we have to be so discerning in who we surround ourselves because they will get you off your, they can deter you from your path. Now, the good thing about it, we can learn from those incidents and go, okay, God, now I'm going to be discerning of who I need to surround myself with. So <laughs> praise God. Um, I just thought that was so awesome. I never forget when TDJ said, man, turn off those soap operas. He said, y'all need to get into this Bible. There's some stuff in this Bible. There's some stories. In, there's some stories in this Bible. It is so true. I'm like, wow, look at what happened. So he ended up dying anyway. Try to set up the man of God, but still died. God's word is true. It is yes and amen. You cannot alter it, right? So anyway, so I just wanted to do that brief scope. And I thank you for joining in so much, Janice. Um, and I hope this was helpful. Now, I know it was helpful to you, and I hope it was it'd be helpful to somebody else. I'm praying for his connections and people. Amen. We have to. We have to pray for the right connections, to walk in discernment, <laughs> to walk in truth, to see the enemy's vices. And that's like one of my main prayers. I'm like, God, please, I don't want to be ignorant. You, don't, you do not want us to be ignorant. I'd rather know who my enemies are, what's planned. You always want me to be ahead of the game. You want me to be, know who my enemies are so I can be aware, you know, and not fall into the traps and the snares, you know, and God to do that. Thank God. And so, and, and just like you have a relation with the Lord, he would do that for you. You know, he would be a fence or he'll protect you from your enemies. And they may not, and sometimes a person that's your enemy may not even know that they're your enemy, that the enemy is using them, but you see it. And sometimes you have to take, uh, uh, um, you have to, uh, relinquish or, or step back from that relationship and they may not understand and sometimes you can't even always go into it but you know and you see it and you pray for that individual as well but you know because the enemy like to use us as pawns and we have to be careful and we talk about christians because he can try to use us as well and he used those things i talk things from your childhood things that bother you bother you and torment you and catch you at such a vulnerable when you're vulnerable like that he can try to use you as a pawn because you know how they say hurt people hurt people and it's so true we, we can so it's so good to be self-aware that's why i say even though i'm talking about the positive side of listening to yourself listen to the negativity that you make something still may be there there may be a remnant of something that you need to deal with and, and bringing self-aware, I think it's so crucial to our development and to our growth, right? Because we need to also see any dysfunction that's still there that we need to bat we need to deal with and get rid of so we don't negatively negatively influence people. We can positively influence people. So anyway, 
these are the things I just wanted to share in terms of finding your voice, finding that message, finding that purpose, what it is you do. If you got something you want to say and you trying to find out what it is, this is what you can do. You have to be sober. Yes, sober minded and alert always. I'd rather you be sober, drunk in the spirit, but not, you know, full of the spirit, but not full of wine. <laughs> Working on it. Yes. I, every day we're working on it. Every day I'm working on it. <laughs> every day. Growing, 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 growing. But anyway, you have a good evening, sis. I'm going to get off here. I'm going to give me something to eat. <laughs> yes. Get me something to eat because I am hungry. Whew. And I need, to, I need to relax now. You have a blessed evening as well. Take care. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. See, I get this thing to stop the broadcast. My thing is freezing up again. I'm going to be working on this. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate them. Bye-bye.